It's pretty easy to link a physical object to an NFT. For example, you could take your inventory of products, for instance, Rolex watches, create a directory, bulk upload them to Polygon or Ethereum using a service such as Nifty Mints, and then display them on Rarible or OpenSea. And this is exactly what a lot of companies are doing right now. Trendy music festival Coachella made sure to hop on board the NFT bandwagon by issuing keys that entitled their owners to certain real world World perks such as backstage access and VIP treatment. DJ Khaled was livid. In life, you have to take the trash out. Major key. We've seen the rise of secondary markets, which auction high-end luxury goods and collectibles as NFTs exclusively with crypto. This auction site serves as a guarantor, digitizing the property title and uploading it to Ethereum. Then whoever buys the NFT is the legal owner of the physical good. And then there's Blockbar the world's first direct-to-consumer NFT marketplace for wines and spirits. Blockbar gives you the NFT and a bottle of booze presumably to drown your sorrows when you realized you spent almost 10 grand on a bottle of liquor. In fact, there are a number of services you can use to generate NFTs for physical products, transforming everyday items into fidgetals, a word that still doesn't feel right when I say it, fidgetals. Startups like Uniquely.io offer to take care of most of the heavy lifting associated with listing your products and generating their digital NFT counterpart by creating a marketplace to list your products. So this is an example of some uh, retail merch that you you can buy that is accompanied with an NFT. Now, I have no idea who the Axie sisters are, so I did a quick Google search to find out. Moving right along. So are any of these examples of digitization of real world assets anything more than fleeting gimmicks riding the crypto hype bubble? So to answer this question, I pulled in my friend Ray who has worked extensively in the Web3 space, winning grants from the likes of IPFS and Chainlink. And it's only recently that the brightest minds in crypto have begun grappling with this question around how to bring real world assets on chain and what the implications of doing so might be. But before we can unpack that, we have to start at the beginning with what an NFT actually is at a fundamental level. You can think of an NFT as having two parts, right? There's a part that's on chain, and then there's the part that the that's being pointed to from the chain, right? So like if you think about your basic ape NFT, we think, well, the, the image, that's the NFT, right? But the from, from blockchain point of view, the NFT is just a number and a URL that goes along with that number that's on a specific smart contract. And that URL is what's pointing to actually another document that then points to another URL that turns out to be the actual ape. So how much of this idea of bringing real world assets on chain is a utility play versus just kind of gimmicks and hype? I mean, there's a lot of just writing the hype out there, but they also really de de depended on this, uh, what, what they call the degen community, uh, which is short for degenerates, uh, as in degenerate gamblers, you know, people who were uh, purchasing these NFTs and then they were um, uh, flipping them right on OpenSea. And without that, I mean, where's the where's the money in this? And I think for, for me, it was really useful to watch this happen because I've been seeing that a lot of the market really is in speculation. So what do you think about these companies auctioning high-end luxury goods or collectible items using NFT exchanges and crypto payments? It's a neat idea. Um, it's one that like people have talked about, like using this uh, in, you know, as a, as a replacement for all sorts of registrars uh, for assets. Um, it's not one that I've seen happen at scale yet. I mean, if you have the key to a safety deposit box and that safety deposit box contains, you know, the the Rolex watch or whatever, and then you go sell that say, that key to someone else, well, then they're able to open up the box and you're not anymore. That seems like a reasonable proxy for, you know, a lot of, you know, key issues of ownership. There has been a rise in concern around supply chain sustainability and ethical sourcing. Consumers are becoming increasingly sensitive to the origins of the products they purchase. Companies like Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee have successfully leveraged the concept of digital twins and product passports to cut down on counterfeiting. Each barrel 
of authentic Blue Mountain coffee is assigned a non-fungible token. Then using a unique QR code for each product, consumers can trace their beans, which shows verified details from picking, sorting, and barreling to roasting and transport. This guarantees the coffee is genuine. It seems like there could be an opportunity here to make transparent product lineage. Yeah, uh, the of course, I mean, the bad guys are not going to participate uh, until they absolutely have to. The And the good guys have nothing to hide. But the truth is, like, that kind of recording and accounting, it's not clear to me that the customers really care all that much. Uh, and they certainly don't care about it at a detail level, right? In general, hey, Apple, those good guys are bad guys. They get their answer. Different people can have different answers to that. But but the the, the idea of using a uh, blockchain for like supply chain sourcing uh, has been kicking around for you know at least over five years. Um, and the uh, and one of the neat things about it is that it makes use of, of the immutability factor, but doesn't really require the public factor. So one of the things that sort of also comes out is, is this the kind of thing that should be on Ethereum or Polygon? Or is this kind of thing you just do on a private blockchain in order to be, you know, guaranteeing that supply line, that security as you're as you're moving up, right? Looking at blockchain as a technology rather than just a set of these uh, the, the set of networks. And the grand vision here seems to be a shift away from the linear economy towards what is being dubbed the circular economy. Now, SpaceX embodied this philosophy by introducing the concept of reusable rockets, which substantially reduced costs around space travel and combated planned obsolescence. But that's just the beginning of what this movement could mean for supply chain and the economy at large. Do you think these fidgetal representations will hold up in the case of ownership disputes? Representation isn't absolute. Right, it's not, it's kind of on a spectrum of being being from being formal to informal, and from being enforceable to being basically non enforceable. Like in the case of real estate, it is a deed, a deed that's filed in a registry. That is what uh, decides who actually owns a given uh, a real estate. Uh, it also affects who owns like a car, um, because th these are things that are regulated in certain ways. Uh, it's one of the reasons why there's a company called Roofstack, I think, uh, and they recently got into the business of putting real estate on uh, on chain. And the way they do it was they made a company that surrounds that particular piece of real estate and then have the equity for that company, the shares of that company, signed over to whoever owns this NFT. So for the time being, real estate, bonds, equities, and other assets largely remain sequestered away in centralized jurisdictions, exchanges, and databases. The dream of aggregating this information into a single open ledger remains just that, a dream. And unfortunately, NFTs for physical products, at least today, are largely little more than novelties and gimmicks. But if and when that chasm is crossed, a whole new world of financialization may become available for assets previously relegated to more traditional means of trade. And it's entirely possible we find ourselves in a reality where a large consumer purchase, such as buying a house, could be settled with an NFT transfer. If you want to mint your own NFTs like you watched me do in this video, then check out my tutorial on how to create, sell, and transfer NFTs, which you can view right here. Thanks.